We are back with NBC News Investigates. This morning, an important story for the estimated 26 million Americans who have their prescriptions mailed to them. Yeah, a lot of folks mm-hmm. who getting prescriptions delivered can be convenient and certainly cost effective. But some people have told NBC News it can also be a source of frustration and in some cases fear. NBC senior investigative correspondent Cynthia McFadden is here with an eye-opening investigation. Hey, Cynthia, good morning. Good morning. Well, over the past year, NBC News has investigated the complaints of more than six dozen patients. We heard about things like broken vials, crushed pills, and even life-saving medications exposed to extreme weather. We begin with one little girl. And big breath. (laughs) Sophie Dean has cystic fibrosis. She's been on medication since she was a baby. One of those meds, an enzyme that helps her digest food and grow. But when her family started getting it through Express Scripts Mail Service Pharmacy, Sophie's mother, Erica, says she started to see a decline in Sophie's health. I started to think, okay, wait a minute. We were told when she was two weeks old, don't even keep the enzymes in the car because they won't be as effective. Square roots. The enzyme's label says it should stay at room temperature. But without delivery notification, Erica says it sometimes sat on the family's North Carolina porch for hours after arriving in an unair-conditioned postal service truck. Erica says she called Express Scripts asking them to ship it differently, but was rebuffed. You're not a pharmacist, ma'am. My response was that I don't have to be a pharmacist to read the bottle and know what the temperature requirement is. Erica is convinced that Sophie's failing health was due to the way her medicine was delivered. But experts told NBC News that's nearly impossible to prove. Sophie did suffer, eventually getting a feeding tube. I remember just laying on the floor and crying until there was a puddle of tears. Like the majority of customers we spoke to, Erica's insurance plan forced her to fill long-term maintenance prescriptions by mail or pay out of pocket. What was the price of this medication? About $8,000 a month for one medicine. Express Scripts told us that it's employers and health plans that decide how people get to fill their prescriptions, not them. Very often, um, patients have no choice in their prescription coverage. Aaron Fox is a drug information specialist at the University of Utah. Mail order pharmacy can be very convenient for for patients, but it's not going to do patients any good to get uh, medicine that's no longer potent because it's been exposed to extreme temperatures. It's really important to keep your medications that are room temperature, room temperature, and that that doesn't mean 90 degrees, and, and it doesn't mean, you know, 40 degrees either. So this is where we actually put pills in bottles. Wendy and Barnes is the president of home right. delivery for Express Scripts. She shows us how Express Scripts packages refrigerated medications like insulin in coolers with gel packs, but said for room temperature medications like Sophie's, no special packaging is used. Nothing's perfect, though, and sometimes things don't work out the way they're intended. And if it was determined that, in fact, the medication uh, wasn't usable or there was any concern about how that medication arrived, we will, in fact, replace that medication. So when someone on your team says to the mother, you're not a pharmacist, ma'am. That's unacceptable. What I will say is I have every confidence in what it is we're doing today. Our investigation found that devices indicating if a package has gotten too hot or too cold can cost under a dollar. But Express Scripts told us they very rarely use them. We're very confident that we've tested the, the most difficult conditions that that package could endure. The thing I really don't understand is why a temperature monitor inside the package wouldn't be good for you and good for your customers. And I would never suggest that it's not a bad idea. It's just not something that we do today. Eventually, Erica did get an exception, allowing her to fill Sophie's prescription at a local pharmacy. And she says then Sophie's issues went away but the experience still haunts her. They stole a lot from us, emotionally. I never got an apology. It was just too bad. Yeah, she deserves more than that. Everyone deserves more than that. 
So the three largest mail order pharmacies told us that their service is safe, convenient, and cost effective, and that by and large customers are very pleased with their service. Those companies generated over $300 billion in revenue last year. Yeah, and it's not just a matter of convenience when sometimes as, as, the, as the mom in your story, you're required or else you got to pay out of pocket. You got to use these companies. Are they regulated in any way, Cynthia? Well, mail order pharmacies come under the jurisdiction of the state pharmacy boards. We reached out to all 50 boards, and here's what we were told. The vast majority do not have specific rules for how to ship medications, telling us ultimately it's up to the pharmacy to ensure sh safe shipping. It's something worth taking a very hard look at for your own medications and how they're arriving. Absolutely, Cynthia, mm -hmm. a real eye-opener. Thank you for your story. We appreciate it.